All right, so now here we go. Let's talk about what we're looking at now. So a lot going on, on in the big picture, right? Let me just start over here in the eastern Atlantic because that's not a big deal at this point. We've got this system, which is Invest 92. That, and the models basically take it out to the northwest and recurve it, right? Not a big deal, 40% chance for development. That is the remnant of Emily. Remember Tropical Storm Emily? Well, that's going to just drift off to the north. So that's staying out to sea. No worries there. This is Tropical Storm Franklin. I'll talk about this, and then I'll get into our particular wave. Franklin finally pulling away from Hispaniola, but it will likely increase in intensity over the next several days. The so Cat 1, perhaps even Cat 2 is now the forecast and end up looks like just west of Bermuda, so they will have to watch it. And then here's our system. It's actually down here in the Pacific. Honduras, Nicaragua, it's this area right here. You can see some showers and storms really getting fired up today. This is expected to drift northward over the next 24 to 48 hours. So that would put us into Friday night into Saturday afternoon. And then in this area here, and then continue drifting to the north or northeast, depending on which model is correct, by the time we get towards, it looks like now, Saturday night, Sunday into Monday. So let's start with Franklin. 50 mile per hour winds. You can see the hard right turn that Franklin took and then went off to the north, mainly over Porter, uh, excuse me, rain for Puerto Rico initially, but then mainly over Dominican Republic, the eastern side of Hispaniola. Good news is now the rain has stopped and it will continue to be dry there as that system moves further off to the north. But they've had some serious flooding in parts of that area. Uh, it's moving to the north at 13 miles per hour. Here's the latest forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see we've got a Category 1 hurricane by, it looks like now, late Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then by Tuesday, it's Cat 2. In fact, could be by Monday a Cat 2 hurricane. We've only had one hurricane so far this year. That will be the second hurricane. But you notice it's moving to the north. Bermuda is right there. So Bermuda will have to watch it, but the East Coast looks good to me. Some models are getting a little bit closer to the Carolinas, but I think most of the weather stays well offshore. That is a surf maker for the East Coast, especially the Carolinas and points northward up towards Jersey, even Long Island. Going to get some good surf for those folks. So that's good news there. There'll be some for the East Coast of Florida as well. Now, let's talk about our system right there, right? That's Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock. This is the European model. Now, the European model has been the main model. It's a good model, but it's been the main model that's been depicting this particular development, right? There are a couple others that are seeing something similar. There it is right there Saturday afternoon. Now, depending on the shape of this, if we've got a closed low, it's possible that we could actually get a potential tropical cyclone or a depression to form late Saturday into Saturday night. And once that happens, you end up getting a cone and a forecast track, right? Let's go out to Sunday. So the center's kind of sitting here on Saturday. Sunday, it's right here. It has not really moved. But you see that white line right there? That's an indication that it's organizing. And it's got an area of lower pressures around the center. This is one of the technical things that we look for for at least a depression. You want a, a closed low, we call it. An area of low pressure with higher pressures all the way around it. And then you could circle that one, and that's a closed low. That's the storm system starting to organize and deepen as far as pressures go. So now watch what happens Sunday afternoon. This is 2 o'clock into Monday. Now it's on the move. That's 2 o'clock Monday afternoon, 24 hours later. Now it takes a while, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But now there's the western tip of Cuba. You can see the counterclockwise spin here. Again, just a model run. But notice rain starting to get up towards the Keys Monday afternoon. Look what happens Monday night into Tuesday. That's our concern, right? Most of this, the European model is what I'm showing you here. Most of the runs lately are suggesting it's in the 45 to 50 mile per hour range. That's like Harold that just went through southeast Texas, right? It wasn't much, but it, here's the problem. is we're, we're not looking at a long track storm that's coming all the way across the Atlantic. We can track it for days. It's not like that. This is something that down here would just be developing but within about a 24 to 36 hour period, it's on our doorstep and it's increasing in intensity. And that's what we call in close development. And it's something that we've been watching for all season long because the water's just so warm, right? 90s in the water. Uh, and because there's some shear, which makes it harder for long track storms to happen. But that's what Harold, Harold was drifting here in the central Gulf. It wasn't that much. They did a potential tropical cyclone out here because it still wasn't organized. 
And then it was a 50 mile per hour tropical storm as it made landfall within about 24 hours of a PTC. So that's the, I don't want to say rapid intensification because that implies that it would be really strong, but let's say rapid organization. And that's what I think will try to happen here by Sunday morning early through Monday night into Tuesday right there. Now that's going to move through Tuesday into the afternoon and Tuesday night. That's Wednesday afternoon. It will be pulling away. The wind will not be a threat at that particular point. And again, the winds of 45 to 50 if, if that holds. And then it moves out and, and we're looking more and more in the clear. Now let's look at the GFS model. There's our wave. 4 o'clock Sunday p.m. Not too different, right? Not too different. Maybe not closing off a low here. But then watch what happens as we go into Monday into Tuesday. That's Tuesday at 6 p.m. The European had the system sitting right here. The GFS doesn't. It's got an open wave, not developing, over Cuba, rainfall over South Florida, and then ejecting all of this off to the north and the east. So you got one that says it's here, one that says it's not. Right? The one that says it's here usually unfortunately is a little bit better. It's the European model, a little bit more accurate. There are other models that we're looking at that are trying to close off some kind of low and maybe taking it more towards Fort Myers. Almost every one of those is very weak, including the European model, uh, but a little bit more argument to say that, yeah, we could have something kind of a little bit better organized headed towards South Florida at least, if not Central Florida where we are here in the Tampa Bay area by Tuesday. Otherwise, you can see tropical moisture heading our direction, and we'll take that. And even if we had a, mi a small tropical storm, storm surge wouldn't be too much of an issue. Harold, when it went into Texas, had 50 mile per hour winds, and they had a one to three foot storm surge. Would be something similar to us, but way too far out in time for this to happen. The, the reason why I wanted to go over this today and spend a little extra time is because this is all going to get into motion over the weekend. And I know a lot of folks aren't paying attention to the news or the weather over the weekend. So here's what you need to know now. The Hurricane Center says it has a 50% chance of developing Saturday, Sunday into Monday. All right. A, a potential tropical cyclone or a tropical depression is possible late Saturday night into Sunday. And what that means is that we could get a cone. Okay, and so the, the cone would be coming up into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And if the forecast model that shows holds, that would actually put us in the cone if that were to happen. Right? And that would happen again Saturday night, maybe Sunday morning. And so then you'd wake up and be like, oh, what's going on, right? Now you know that that's what would be happening. So the impacts for us still, it was just too, way too far to go into the detail. But the timing looks like it would be late Monday into Tuesday. Tuesday during the day would probably see the heaviest wind and rain that we're going to see. Uh, and then Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, things are quieting down just a little bit. I'm not extremely worried about this one because the modeling so far is weak. But the only thing that concerns me is that the rapid intensification possibility. So you want to stay tuned with us over the next several days. And of course, we'll be constantly updating you on air, online, on our, our, our stream as well, too. Don't forget that. You can get that for your Roku TV, that type of thing. And don't forget the app. It's absolutely free. You can get all our videos there. This is my social media, Bobby Deskins Weather on Facebook and YouTube. My Instagram is Bobby D Weather, and on X, it's Bobby WTSP. I'll be updating, of course. We're going to be busy here uh, for the next uh, several days. Hopefully, it kind of just weakens and goes further off towards the east. And that's what the GFS model is saying. That would be typical of a weaker system. A stronger system would come a little bit further to the north, just like what the European model is saying. So right now, not a time to panic. Now is the time to get your hurricane kit ready to go. We've been talking about it, right? Should have that already ready to go. And of course, your plan. What would you do? It, it, just in case they were to say, hey, we need to evacuate level A or something like that. Do you know where you would go? Do you know your zone? Do you know if you live in A, B, or C, right? Now's the time to have that plan. Know where you live, know where you would go, know how you would keep in contact with friends and family if you did want to leave the area. I, I don't think this is a big deal right now. And in fact, looking at, at some of this stuff, you look at some of these models, to me, e even dealing with the European model, we had some much needed rainfall heading our direction. We got a really big drought, especially Manatee, Sarasota County, parts of Pinellas and Hillsborough. And that tropical moisture there would actually be pretty good for us. And we can handle some rain here, three, four, five inches without seeing terrible flooding just because of our our topography and the fact that we get rain all through the summer. All right, guys, that's the update for now. Again, stay tuned. We'll keep you updated right here on 10 Tampa Bay. We're going to keep you performed. Per 
informed, prepared, and connected.